Hi, welcome to Mathematics with Tom. I am Tom, and today, today we're going to talk about the variance and the standard deviation. So I want to create a, a picture to provide motivation for the, what, we're, what they are. So we're going to have two data sets. So we'll have set one. Set one has the data values of one, three, five, seven, nine, and 11. That's data set one. Data set two has the values of four, five, six, six, seven, and eight. So just so that you can see these, I'm going to sketch them. Let's make a little dot plot of this picture. So uh, obviously my dot plot's gonna need to go to 11. We're gonna go do something kind of a little, little crazy here. I think you'll like it though. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. Okay, I can get rid of that little extra bit there. And I'm going to put um, set one, we'll put on the top. So my dots are one, three, one, three, five, seven, nine, and 11. And I'll label those, I should label those numbers just so in case we need to reference them. There's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And here's what we're going to do. This is kind of, I think, a fun way to do this. I'll even do it in a different color. And that is, we're going to put set two on the bottom side of our number line. So we have a four, a five, oh, a six repeats, seven, and an eight. So we're going to do something we need. So here's what I want to do. I'm going to do my, I think I'll do all my calculations for set one in white, and we'll do our calculations for set two in blue. So let's do this. Let's calculate. Let's calculate in a smaller font here. Let's calculate the mean for data set one. So this will be in white. I'll call it even a little one for set one. So the mean is going to be one plus three plus five plus seven plus nine plus 11, all of that, and there's uh, divided by the number of data values of which there's six. Add those up, that's eight. Oh, look at this. One plus 11 is 12. 3 plus the 9 is 12, 5 plus the 7 is 12, 12 times 3, that's 36. Um, I don't know if you saw that, but I will add it up like you would expect. 1 plus 3 is 4, plus 5 is 9 more, 9 plus 7 is 16, plus 5 is 25, 11, this is 36. Divided by 6, this has a mean of 6. Okay, now, Let's calculate, let's calculate the mean for data set two. I'll also do it in blue and we'll label it X bar with a little subscript of two. Okay, so this is four plus five plus six plus six plus seven plus eight. Add those numbers up. We're gonna divide by the number, there's six, and notice that this is, let's see, 9, 4 plus 5, that's 9. 9 plus 6 is 15. <laughs> 15 and 6 is 21. 21 is 20, plus 7 is 28. 8 more. This is 36 over 6. But wait a minute. That's the exact same number that we got above. It's 6. So here's the question. Notice that both data sets have the exact same mean. But when you look at the data sets, one of the data sets is spread out, right? It goes from one to 11, that's a range of 10. The other data set's very tight. It has a range from four to eight, that's only a range of 
4. So the mean isn't really describing the fact that one set is very compact and one set is very stretched. So that's what the variance in the standard deviation seek to do. It's a way of measuring the amount of spread from the mean. That's what we're going to do. So standard deviation, let's, let's write this. Uh, variance in standard deviation, I'm going to add to my title, is, is a measure of the visual spread of the data from the mean. That's what it is. Now, I, I want to show you something, something that's kind of fun. So, so we measure the spread well, let's, by doing this. We take, we're going to modify this because I want to build some insight. So we're going to just start with the variance, and I'll show you why. So we're going to start with the variance. I'll just call it VAR. And we'll do this for the set one, so this will be in white. Well, watch this. If I take, if I take the first data value, that's 1, and then I subtract the mean, that's 6 plus, that would be how far the 1 is from the mean. Well, because that's what subtraction is, is distance. Subtraction represents distance. So let's do that for all of them. So if I take 3 and subtract 6 plus, take the 5 and subtract 6 plus, take the 7 and subtract 6 plus, 9 minus 6 plus, 11 minus 6. So notice this. The mean is 6. So I'm going to just put that this is my... This is the mean right here. It's the mean for both data sets. That's the mean. So when I take one minus six, oh, and we're gonna do one more thing. We're gonna take all those. That's the spread. And we're gonna divide it by the amount of the, the amount of spread, or the average. We want the average of these spreads. So we're gonna divide by the number of data. That's six. But watch this. 1 minus 6, that's negative 5, negative 5, plus 3 minus 6, that's negative 3, plus 5 minus 6, that's negative 1, plus 7 minus 6, that's 1, 9 minus 6, 3, 11 minus 6, 5. Again, divide it by 6. Now, Here's where this problem gets much more interesting, much more interesting. Because if you take a negative 5, for example, if you take this negative 5 here and you add it to positive 5, well, negative 5 plus 5, that's just 0. And if I did that with the negative 3 and the positive 3, that's also 0. And negative 1 plus 1, that's also 0. So wait a minute, let's just add to 0. That's correct. It should always do that. But zero does not in any way, and it, the same thing will happen with set two. So zero is in no way showing us a way to measure something we can see. It's not zero. So what we do is we square all the values. And the reason is, is it makes them all positive. So let's come back on our formula here and we square each value. This yellow, this little exponent of 2, that's our fix. This is the fix. Squaring them. Okay, so that means I have to square all of these numbers as well. Okay, now we can finish our calculation. So negative 5 squared becomes 25. Yeah. Negative 3 squared is 9. Negative 1 squared is 1. Plus 1 squared is 1. 3 squared is 9. 5 squared is 25. I'm going to add all that up. We'll divide it by 6. I'm going to go to the right here just so I can have some more space. 
Uh, notice if you add from the 25 and the 25, that's 50. Plus the 9 and the 9 is 18, so that's 68 plus 2 more. 68, 70 divided by 6. Now, before I continue, I'm going to go to my calculator. I want to show you something. First of all, let's take our 70, divide it by 6. There's our answer, 11 with a repeating 6. And the reason you know that that is because, notice that 70 is 2 times 35. 6 is 2 times 3. This reduces to 35 over 3, just a little below 30. Oops. Yeah. And notice that 3 goes into 35 11 times. That would be your 11. And then 5 thirds would be, or 2 thirds would be left over. That's your repeating 6s. I'll just write as 11 and 2 thirds. But you could also write as 11.6 repeating. Or we should round it to 11.7. You pick. <laughs> I know. These decisions. Now, here's what I wanted to show you. This, let's go look at this pretty yellow. And let's take a look at one of these negatives. How do you do that on your calculator? Let's see. If I take, watch this. If I type minus... So notice that when I just hit the minus button, it gave me answer. I mean, it was going to take the 11 point repeating sixes and then subtract something. So I'm going to clear that. That's not right. The negative button is this button below the three with the parentheses around the minus sign. So negative five. Now, if I'm going to hit the squared button, you see it on the left column. It's one, two, three, four, five up from the bottom left. Press it, squared, press enter. You get negative 25. Well, I just wrote positive 25. So you might say, well, what are you doing, Tom? <laughs> I'm messing up. So, you, so to hopefully prevent you from doing this. Notice that I put parentheses around the negative 5. So let's try that again. Parenthesis, negative 5, parenthesis. And now we'll hit the squared button and then press Enter. Notice that now we get a positive 25. And that's the key. If there's parentheses in the formula, you need to keep the sign in there and put whatever is in the parentheses, keep it in the parentheses because otherwise it'll change the answer. Your calculator knows this, so make sure you enter things correctly. Okay, so that negative five squared is different than the quantity of negative five squared. Okay, that's an easy mistake to make. We've all done it. I am trying to save this for our own selves. All right, let's take our blue pen. Let's calculate the standard deviation for, for the second group, so the, or the variance, I'm sorry, the variance. So I'm gonna do this, we're gonna go straight to it now. So I'm going to take my data value, four, minus the mean of six, and we'll square it, plus. The next data value is five, minus 6 squared. Next data value is a 6, minus 6 squared. Plus the next data value is also a 6. We could have just written times 2. It would have worked as well. Squared. Plus 7 minus 6 squared. Plus 8 minus 6 squared. And it's actually, the variance is the average of all these, so we divide it by 6. So what do we get? 4 minus 6, it's negative 2. We square it for 4. Plus. 5 minus 6 is negative 1. Square it for 1. Plus. 6 minus 6, that's 0. Square it for 0. Plus. 6 minus 6 again is 0. Squared, it's still 0. Plus 7 minus 6, it's 1. Squared, 1. 8 minus 6, that's 2. Squared, that's 4. So here we go. That's 5. This is 10 over 6. I'm going to reduce it. This is the same as 5 
thirds. So this is really a one and two thirds. Or you could write this as one with repeating sixes, which would round to seven. One point seven. But you should double. You should double check me on that. That's how you calculate the variance. I'm going to have to go to a new screen. Okay, here we go. The variance, okay, let's do this. So we found that the variance for one of the data sets was, for the first one, was 35 over 3. And we found, oh, so let's just do that. So to get the standard deviation, I'm going to abbreviate SD, it's the square root of the variance. So what do we get? Oops, there's a 3 up there, 35 thirds. So in other words, the standard deviation for the first set is the square root of 35 over 3. So this, let's put that in our calculators. Square root, we take um, 35, divide it by 3, press enter. There it is, 3.415. We'll just round it to the nearest tenth, 3.4. Now, let's do the same. Let's do the same for the second data set, which was 5 thirds. So then the standard deviation for set two is the square root of the variance. Same, same process. Well, in this case, the square root of five thirds. Uh, let's try. Square root five thirds. 1.29, it would round to three, 1.3. rounds to 1.3. Now, uh, clarifications. These are, these are a big deal. When there's a theoretical variance, and it's, so this is, um, and it's if you, you can take, if, if it was possible for you to sample the entire population, for example, if you were to take the, the age of every person in the United States, you can't miss one of them, not one, all of them, then that would be the population standard deviation. The population variance first. That is denoted by this sigma character. It's a Greek letter, sigma squared. It's pronounced sigma. And we write it as the sum of the data minus the population mean, which is mu squared, divided by the number of data. The reason this is a calculation we don't do often is because most cases we if we're sampling data from a group we usually don't sample everything it becomes prohibitive both in time and money and effort or even of interest so because of that because of that normally what we would do is we would have what's called the excuse me the sample sample variance And there's two corrections, three correct, three changes. Watch, one is instead of using the Greek letter sigma squared, we write it as S squared for sample, or for S for standard deviation. The idea is the same, we take the sum, we add up all of the data, minus the mean, but this time the mean is the mean of the sample. We square it. And for the proof of this is actually beyond this course, and it has to do with the expectation values. We divide it by the number of data minus one, and that's because S squared, we call it, is a biased estimator. Mm 
And that's why we do that. And then, and now, to, those are the variances. And once, so whenever you're calculating these, calculate the variance, then find the standard deviation. Because to find, for example, the population, population standard deviation. All we do is we take the square, we, it's, oh, sorry. It's denoted by just sigma, and we get it by taking the square root of the population variance. That's it. That's just what we just did in this previous, in the problem we worked today. And to find the sample standard deviation, I'm going to abbreviate SD for standard deviation. It's just S, and we just simply take the square root, oops, of the sample variance, just like we did today in this problem. And that's how you calculate the standard deviation uh, and the motivation as to what it describes. It describes the spread of the data about the mean. I hope that helps, and thanks for watching.